What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today we have another Crystal Beast deck profile. However, it's completely different than the ones we've done before. This one is Crystal Conclave Control, a mid-range control version of the deck that I think is actually going to be the most competitively viable Crystal Beast variant. If you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. Deck profiles, dual videos, combo videos, product openings, all that good stuff. You'll see it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned for everything i'm really excited to get into it so with that let's get into the deck profile all right so just before we get into the deck profile here i do want to explain two things one shout out to neshi who i believe is the person who created conclave control neshi's a good friend of mine and i love the guy so this is very much inspired off of his conclave control build secondly i think that this is actually the better way to play the deck going into today's format just because conclave itself is just such an annoying card so for that reason i think being able to abuse this card over and over again is really really powerful all right so we're going to start off with the deck profile we're going to start with three crystal beast sapphire pegasus this card is the most important card in your deck the whole goal is to just keep abusing the sapphire pegasus effect over and over we all know that sapphire pegasus can crystallize monsters from your deck or your hand but it can actually also crystallize from your graveyard so this is essentially how you are going to keep recurring your sapphire pegasus and then later on in the video i'm going to explain how they keep coming back to your hand so that you can continue to normal summon them over and over so once you get into your first sapphire pegasus you're good to go because you can just keep looping those sapphire pegasus names over and over again then we're playing three of the rainbow dragon crystal beast this card is insanely powerful as well not only does this card provide you the access to get to a sapphire pegasus on your opening turn not only does it give you access to adding rainbow dragon to your hand so that you can get access to one of the most broken spell cards in this deck which i'll explain in a little bit but this card is also essentially like a battle trap in the battle phase if a crystal beast monster you control is attacking you can special summon it so it becomes a big beater for you and this is essentially how you're going to try to end games you're pretty much going to try to floodgate your opponent out with your conclave as well as some of the field spells that i'm going to talk about later and then you're going to go into zenith maybe double zenith with sapphire pegasus and try to attack for game right so this is very important to your combo we're playing the one ruby carbuncle this card is of course really powerful as well because you special summon this you get all your sapphire pegasus from your spell and trap card zone onto your side of the field activate their effects again so it's very powerful in that sense so that's why we're playing the one ruby carbuncle then of course the mandatory one rainbow dragon because you need this card for your crystal beast rainbow dragon effect to resolve now unlike the combo build you actually don't need Need your crystal beast rainbow dragon effect to resolve more than once in the combo build you would like it to do that but in this build you actually don't need it to as long as you can get these in your spell and trap card zone you're always going to be getting them back to your hand with your crystal conclave so for that reason this card is just powerful to just set up and just hold there right so that's why it doesn't need to activate its effect over and over in this deck because you can see we're playing a very little monster count but all the monsters are just going to keep recurring each other then moving on to the spell cards we are playing i think the most broken spell card in this entire deck it's a true draco spell card and and that is three rainbow bridge of the heart this card is insanely powerful gives you an extra normal summon it gives you a bounce if you are wanting to go second it gives you a search for a crystal beast spell or trap card this card is so powerful it does so many different things so you have to be maxing out on these you have to be playing three of these and then you're playing three of another very very broken spell card and the reason the only reason really that you're playing the rainbow dragon is for this card because awakening of the crystal ultimates is such an insane card it's pretty much like a monster reborn special summon kind of effect for you but it also has another effect where you can add a rainbow bridge from your deck to your hand which means that you can add rainbow bridge of the heart or you can add just a regular rainbow bridge which can then search something else in your deck right so this card is insanely powerful and does so many different things for you and that's why this combo with the zenith is really really powerful because now you have options to either search deeper into your deck or it can special summon a crystal beast monster from your deck which a lot of the time is going to be a ruby carbuncle because if you have a crystallized rainbow dragon or a crystallized sapphire pegasus then you can just special summon them and then try to go for game in that sense right so this card provides you with a lot of different utility then we're playing three rainbow bridge you have to be playing three of this it's a not once per turn rota you can add any crystal spell or trap card from your deck to your hand which is insanely powerful we're playing the one crystal bond yeah crystal bond is a very very broken card very very powerful card but as you can see we're minimizing our monster count also we want this deck to be as consistent as possible you're never going to be resolving bond more than once really in a game so for that reason we're playing the three rainbow bridge which can get us to a bond whenever we need to get to a bond but otherwise i think the one of is just perfectly fine it's also a once per turn unlike rainbow bridge which is not once per turn 
crystal bond is so the one time you resolve it is all you're gonna need then for the last crystal beast cards we're playing here we're playing one bridge of salvation very integral in this deck because once you get this effect off you can pretty much set up more floodgates just with this one effect so it's very powerful to be playing the bridge of salvation we're playing three crystal miracle which is just an on negate for crystal beast very very powerful it also puts your sapphire pegasus maybe on your side of the field into your spell and trap card zone which then lets you activate crystal conclave this card right here is the entire purpose of the deck crystal conclave trust me i've played against it one too many times and this card gets really annoying but it's really really powerful so i'm going to read it out to you guys i also have it on the screen so you guys can see but this card itself is essentially the entire reason why this deck can be played in a competitive way so once per turn if a face-up crystal beast monster you control is destroyed by battle or card effect you can special summon a crystal beast monster from your deck so first things first if you end up destroying one of your crystal beasts with your rainbow bridge of the heart let's just say you can chain your crystal conclave to special summon another one from your deck so that's a very good effect just in itself but the main effect that you need this for is you can send this face-up card from your field to the graveyard then target a crystal beast card you control and target one card on the field return them to the hand so what this lets you do is it pretty much lets you compulse one of your monsters but usually you're going to be compulsing one of the crystallized crystal beasts so let's say something like a sapphire pegasus so that you can normal summon it again on your next turn but you're also going to be compulsing a card your opponent controls now you cannot activate the effects in the same chain however these effects are not once per turn so for that reason if you have double conclave up on your side of the field you can get double bound so crystal conclave is essentially the reason why this deck is so powerful you just keep recurring your sapphire pegasus in your spell and trap card zone same thing with your zenith you just keep recurring them over and over you keep bouncing cards your opponent controls and then you're going to want to go for otk in your following turn so yes it's a control deck but it's kind of like a mid-range deck because once you control the game state you can actually start to push for a lot of damage at once so that's it for the crystal cards for the non-crystal cards we're playing the one necro valley as well as the one mystic mine i know we're playing the mystic mine guys don't hate me but mystic mine is very important so how you get access to these is with your bridge of salvation if it's in your graveyard you can banish it you can add a crystal beast monster from your deck to your hand and you can add any field spell one field spell from your deck to your hand it doesn't matter which one so for this format necro valley is very powerful because it pretty much breaks and destroys the entire tier limit matchup but mystic mine is also very good as well if you are going second or forced to go second and your opponent puts up a crazy board and you need a couple turns to recuperate mystic mine is the way to go but if you're going first and you can set up a necro valley you're pretty much winning the game against any tier limit board necro valley is just typically very good into a lot of the meta decks but we all know this format tier limits is going to be one of the best decks if not just hands down the best deck so for that reason necro valley is really good tri brigade sprite is also a deck that's making a lot of waves right now so necro valley is really good against them as well so that's why we're playing these two field spells just the most impactful field spells in today's format we're playing the one called by the grave of course we're playing the three pot of prosperity the extra deck is really nice to go into but you don't really need to go into it that often prosperity pretty much guarantees that you're gonna get to your conclave even if it doesn't get the conclave itself it could get into your rainbow bridge it could get into your rainbow bridge of the heart or your awakening and then as soon as you get into any one of these cards you're getting into your conclave you're getting into your crystal miracle so you're gonna be setting up the gates and floodgates on your turn no matter what so prosperity is very good in that sense we're playing three foolish burial goods now this card is essentially just here for consistency so we can send the bridge of salvation as fast as possible but you can also send the crystal miracle if you already have bridge of salvation in rotation and the reason why i say that is because crystal miracle has a really cool effect if a crystal beast card or cards is placed in your spell and trap card zone while this card is in your graveyard even during the damage step you can banish this card and you place a crystal beast monster from your hand deck or graveyard face up into your spell and trap card zone as a continuous spell so what this lets you do is let's say you're in the battle phase and your opponent attacks over your sapphire pegasus it goes to your spell and trap card zone what ends up happening is you can use your crystal miracle banish it and then you can put another sapphire pegasus from your hand deck or graveyard into your spell and trap card zone which is really powerful because then you can activate your awakening which can then summon a ruby and then ruby is going to summon them two back so it's very powerful in that sense but it can activate in any way that a crystal beast monster is crystallized right so this card is really good of course to send your bridge of salvation but it's also really good to send your crystal miracle as well right and then we're just playing hand traps to counter the meta dd crow is one of the best hand traps in the game right now so we're going to be playing three dd crow as well as three ash blossom which is just the most generic so it's a 40 card main deck i explained it a little bit in depth but this deck is one of those decks that may feel a little weird to look at because you guys are seeing like oh we're only playing like three crystal beast monsters i know it sounds weird or it looks weird but in practice this deck is very very powerful you just really have to understand what the cards do right then for the extra deck the extra deck doesn't matter too much if i'm being honest with you you rarely go into it sometimes you do we're playing one zeus of course you guys can see all the xyz monsters we're playing we're playing the one ding girsu if you ever go into a rank eight if you have two zenith on the side of the field never really happens but it can happen so we're playing the one ding we're playing 
and Dweller. Of course, Dweller is one of the best Xyz monsters in this game right now. If you can't get to your Necro Valley right away, then Dweller is a really good opportunity for you to just shut out the tier matchup. Then we're playing the Wumba Guska, which is just an auto save card. This card is just really good. One Lightning Chidori, pretty good card. One Dugaris, just a lot of toolbox cards as you guys can see here. One Tornado Dragon. And that's why we're playing Prosperity, by the way, because it's just toolbox cards. If you know the matchup you're going up against, you can just banish the cards that you are not going to be needed against that matchup, right? And then for the Link Monsters, we're playing the one Underworld Goddess, the one Axis Code Talker. We're playing the one BLS Soldier of Chaos. This card you can actually make because sometimes the effect where if it was linked using a level seven or higher monster is very relevant because a lot of the time you can be using your Zenith to make it, which is a level eight monster, of course. So BLS is pretty cool here. I know BLS might be a little bit pricey. You don't have to play this card if it's just out of your budget. You can play something a little bit cheaper. Again, this is just one of those cards where it's like, if you go into it, it's kind of cool, but you rarely ever do anyways. We're playing the one Unicorn, the one Phoenix, the one Lina. Lina is pretty cool because both your Ruby Carbuncle as well as your Zenith are both light. So you can go into Lina with that. We're playing one Barricade Board Blocker. Barricade Cable Rocker is only good because if you draw the Bridge of Salvation, you really don't want to draw this card. But if you do draw it, Barricade Board Blocker just lets you send it from your hand to the graveyard. So this way you can activate its effect. And then we're playing the one IP Mask Arena. So that's it for the extra deck. Doesn't need too much explanation, just a bunch of toolbox stuff. The main deck just needed a little bit more explanation because I feel like a lot of players, when they see this deck on first hand or at first glance, they're really not sure how this deck plays out. You really are just playing Conclave Control. It's really as simple as what the name is. You just want to control the board state as fast as possible. Possible, and then on your turns three you want to just be going for game right you really want your opponent to play at your pace which is the entire goal of this deck so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on crystal conclave control for this october 2022 format i think this deck is insanely fun also i think it's good enough to be in the rogue tier maybe tier two category it's a very powerful deck especially when your opponents are not ready for it conclave is a really really powerful card and just the recursion that this deck has is insane so i think you guys should try it out i appreciate every single one of you guys if you haven't liked and subscribed already make sure you guys do that the goal is to get to 7500 by the end of the year i think we can do it maybe get to 8000 but you guys gotta subscribe for that remember everything we do here on the channel deck profiles duels combo videos all that good stuff you'll see it here so make sure you stay tuned for that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that thank you now peace